over the last several years, things have changed a little bit on the Silver Dollar City train, and there's some that I love and some that I'm not quite so happy about. One rule about life, things change. Things are constantly changing and evolving and people find new ways to do things or maybe they go back to old ways. And so things are constantly evolving. This is true of anything. And when you spend several years working on something, for example, me working on the train at Silver Dollar City as a conductor train robber, you tend to notice those changes as they happen, especially in the few years afterwards, because it's still fresh for you. This is very true of the train at Silver Dollar City too, and in the last three, four years, there have been several changes that some are noticeable, some probably not so much to other people, and there's been a few that I have really liked, and there's been a few that, let's just say I'm not real happy about it. <laughs> so here are three things that I love, and three things that I really don't love about the train at Silver Dollar City currently. First off, I love that it is still there. And I know this sounds kind of like a cheesy thing, but over the years, there's always been kind of a rumor rumbling in the background that certain people don't like the train robbery or certain people wish they could remove the robbery or they're gradually going to phase it out. And this rumor was going when I started at Silver Dollar City and it's still around. And sometimes it makes you wonder if this is actually true or not, but it's still there. Which actually is a really cool thing because the train was actually one of the original rides at Silver Dollar City. When they first built up the square to help people have something to do while they waited to go in the cave, the train came along pretty quickly afterwards and it was kind of the ride for a little while. In many ways, it still is the ride. They started the robbery because at the time they had a little tiny engine that couldn't make it all the way back up the hill without a full head of steam. So they had to stop the engine and let it build up the steam to get ready to get up this hill. And that's why they built the robbery in, to give people something to do and watch while they were waiting for the engine to get ready. And here we are over 50 years later and they're still doing the robbery. And the funny thing is, some of those lines they use today, they actually go all the way back to the beginning. Yes, there's lots of new lines and they're constantly tinkering with the script, but some of those are original. That actually kind of leads me to the first thing I'm not real happy with is how often they don't seem to know the lines. Okay, you know, when you've done something for three years, you've got this whole thing memorized. And not only do I know the regular script, I know all sorts of alternatives to it and additions and little things that you can do to tweak it. A lot of them official, a few not quite so much. And I know that several of the people that are working on the train have been there for years. There's a couple that started when I was still there and a couple that came in right afterwards. And, and so I watched the train show and I know what's supposed to happen and I watch them blow lines. Now, they may not be things that the regular guests on the train would know, but I know it. And I watch miscues and they forget what they're saying. I'm kind of going, guys, you've been doing this how long? Come on! In that kind of thing, I tend to be kind of a perfectionist. It's like, you know, hey, get this thing right after a while and... And so that bothers me when I see that happen. They oftentimes can pass it off so people don't know it, but you just see little things, little bits of timing, and you know, it's frustrating sometimes to see that. I understand rookies being out there trying to learn the show and stuff, and you expect blown lines there because they're still trying to learn it, but some of them it's way past excuse time, guys. Get it together. Here's one thing I, I really absolutely love. I love the new engines. In the last few years, Silver Dollar City has actually bought four new train engines. One of them they actually used for parts for one of the other engines that because it desperately needed it and it was the same kind of engine. One they use as a diesel puller to move things around. And then they have two more engines that they have restored and brought back into operational condition. Those are engines number 14 and 504. In fact, 504 is the first engine they've run with a tender car since the original little Davenport that used to run out there. They're beautiful. I love the fact that they've got these, that they have several engines that they can rotate around. In fact, this is a good way to completely remove the rumor that they were going to get rid of the train entirely. You don't spend the money they did on new engines and restoring those engines if you're going to remove it. So the train's going to be around for a long time. And the job they did with these is, is just fantastic. My personal favorite is 504. And if I was still working on the train, I would kind of say, you know, that's 
engine I love. It's funny because when you work on the train, everybody gets their favorite engines. And I loved 76, which actually didn't run for one whole year that I was working there because they were working on it. But you have your favorite engines. And right now, 504 would probably fit into that. It's just a beautiful engine. Absolutely love when they run that one. But yes, I, I love the fact that they've got new engines and new equipment. And, and that's been fantastic to see. Good on that, Silver Dollar City. Another one I don't like. And this kind of falls back to the script again. And this is kind of outside the control of the people working on the train, I believe. Is parts of the script that they have eliminated. In particular, the whole routine about Ma. Ma doesn't exist in the script for the most part anymore. If you pull up to where they do the robbery, you'll see that there's a grave marker there with Ma's name on it. And you've got a couple old boots sticking out. So they still have the grave. And then the way the train robbery would work is the boys would try to talk their way out of getting shot by the conductor by telling them that their ma's on the train. You wouldn't shoot us in front of our ma, would you? And then they would pick out a lady on the train to be their ma and try to get her to claim them as their boys so they wouldn't get shot. It would work kind of something like this. Shoot us right now right in front of our ma, would you? Have a heart. I don't reckon I'd shoot anybody in front of their ma, but what's that got to do with this? Your ma's on my train. Oh, yeah, she rides the train every Tuesday, just like clockwork. It's just great, blockhead. Today's Thursday. It's Wednesday. Wednesday? <laughs> Wednesday? <laughs> she even told you what day it was. You didn't tell me loud enough. I didn't hear you. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> well, I don't Tuesday. care what day it is. Because you don't know what day it is either. <laughs> If your mom's on my train, I'll let you go. See you later. But I want to meet her first. You want to do what? Y'all want to meet their mom? Oh, yeah. yeah. She's not up for her right now. Yeah, you see, mom's been under a lot of pressure lately. I don't care if your mom's under a pile of rocks. I want to meet her. We say no. no. I said yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. no. 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 <laughs> well, come on, Ralphie. He wants to meet mom. I can't wait to meet her myself. You guys. What was that? He said, I hope she's not sitting by herself. Uh -huh. We know she's on this train. How do you know that? Got a big whiff for her as your train rolled in. Is that my <laughs> Thank you, Mommy. Hey, Ralph. Would you recognize Mom without a beard? I recognize that smirk anyway. <laughs> 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 Mom, it's so good to see you. <laughs> you look 20 years younger without the beard. <laughs> Come on. Elise. Elise. <laughs> oh, yeah. So did we keep. <laughs> now, Ma, when did you, you get out of jail, though? Oh, a couple days ago. A couple days ago. <laughs> I think this lady's serious. <laughs> well, you're just not in here. Yeah. Where have you been since you got out? I had to pick this guy. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> they only show a lady. Come on. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, there are apparently some people that got easily offended, even though there's nothing really bad about this. And we could kind of count on one or two complaints a year getting back to us over mob being called out on the train. And when you're running a million and a half people a year, yeah, okay, you just kind of ignore it. Well, apparently the powers that be have started listening to it, and I couldn't tell you the last time I saw them do Ma. I've been on the train several times and they've done the 30 minute shows, which is the longer extended show. That's when we would do Ma and they haven't done it. There's nothing wrong with this. Stop giving into PC. It really kind of bothers me that you see changes like that get made, not because of anything wrong with them, but just because you have one or two people who don't have a sense of humor. Bring back Ma. There's no reason to get rid of Ma on that. Uh, just a, a personal little beef. Another thing I love, and this is something that almost nobody riding the train would completely be aware of. I love the fixes that they made to the conductor station on the back of the new trains. One of the things a lot of people may not realize is that they have gradually replaced one of the older train passenger cars with new cars. One car each year, they would build a brand new car and they would pull the old one out of service that was getting plain worn out and they would scrap it and then they gradually built a whole new train, which was wonderful. Except when they first built this, the last car with the conductor station was designed horribly. Just bad, bad design. 
they had somebody who designed a lot of this who had never been on a train and I could go into the whole process. Let's just say it was not done right and not done well. And the people that actually would be involved with it were never consulted. So you ended up with this car that instead of steps up into the back of the conductor station, they put a straight ladder. And so if you're out at the show and you're trying to hop onto the back of that new car, you're trying to climb up a ladder with a shotgun in your hand and trying to hold on and it didn't work well. It also made it very difficult for a couple of our guys who were a little bit older. The knees didn't work quite so good. You're not quite as flexible. So there was a lot of complaints. You know, hey, we didn't have this problem with the old cars because they were designed more with steps versus a ladder. And can't we fix this? And by the time I left, they they had fixed a little bit. They had adjusted the benches and made a couple other changes, but the ladders were still not good. Well, I saw about a year and a half, two years ago, they finally fixed it. On the back of the new car now, they actually opened up the back rail and they put some stairs going down out towards the back. So if you have some not so great knees, you can still get onto the back of this car without trying to kill yourself out of the show. Long overdue fix, but you look at the conductor station now and so much improved. Now if they just had some padding to the bench, it would be even better. But it's a much, much better, much safer condition than it was when they first designed this thing. So from the conductor's perspective, I was very happy to see that change. Much needed, much improved. Again, something that the guests aren't going to see, but it will affect the crew of the train and put them in a better mood, which means better shows for them. The last thing that I'm not happy about really seems to have changed this year. Although there were... It was kind of heading that way when I was there. There's been this ongoing discussion at Silver Dollar City about the proper use of guns. You have a group of people out there now that are just so anti-gun that the sight of a gun gets them in foaming mouth. Which is kind of sad because in Missouri, guns are tools. Guns are a way of life for a lot of people. And in the 1880s, everybody had guns and the setting for Silver Dollar City is... 1880s. So guns are a normal thing. When you ran a train back then, you had to protect the train from robbers. Alfie Bolin is actually based on a real guy, a not nice guy, who lived at a place called Murder Rock. And it was called that for a reason. So guns were part of life, and they've been gradually trying to phase it out. When I worked there, we had a 20-gauge shotgun. It was a real 20-gauge shotgun. It had been fitted so it could only take blanks that had been fitted a certain way. But it was still a real shotgun. And then the robbers actually had real guns on their belts. They had been filled with lead so they couldn't be fired, but they were still real guns. Well, that's kind of gradually changed, and there was some pressure on getting rid of the shotgun and replacing with something else that didn't look quite so authentic. And honestly, a couple of the designs they tossed our way, they look like toy guns. They eventually went to a 410 to replace the shotgun. And if you don't know a 410, it's not much bigger than a BB gun. It makes this little tiny pop, and it, it was kind of sad. But at least it was still a, looking like a shotgun, something that could be used. Well, even that they gave up on. The conductors no longer carry around a shotgun or a rifle or anything like that. In fact, the conductors don't carry a gun at all except during the show. And then they actually use a starter pistol. We had two pistols that we had around for an occasional special show that could still fire blanks. It's a starter pistol as if you were going to start a race. That's what they use for it. The only things they can fire are blanks. Well, now the conductor has no rifle, no shotgun, nothing, and no holster. But when they get off the train, they're awkwardly carrying around this pistol. They have no place to put it safely except carrying it in their hand, which means their finger is automatically near the trigger. I'm sure it's not loaded during the vast majority of the robbery, but still... Not an appropriate way to use a gun at all versus the shotgun, which you could hold by the stock and not be anywhere near the trigger, and it was safe that way. Not only that, but it looked better. So they've gotten rid of the shotgun, they carry around a starter pistol, and they only carry it very awkwardly during the show. The whole removal of the guns thing is dumb. Come on, Silver Dollar City, bring the guns back and make it look legit again. From what I hear, even the town square people, they're, they've gotten rid of the guns there and... It's an overly paranoid thing in response to a few people who complain loudly. And to me, it's really kind of sad because it removes a lot of the realism and the reality and what was going on. Bring the guns back. So there are three things that I really love. I love that it's still there, that it preserves the history. I love the new engines. I love some of the fixes they made. And 
Three things I'm not so keen on. Get your lines down, guys, after years. Bring Ma back and bring the guns back. So do you ride the train? Have you noticed other things have changed that you like or don't like? I'd love to hear your responses as well. Share them in the comments below. Thank you, too, to my patrons for supporting me. I've got these awesome patrons. If you want to know more about supporting me on Patreon, be sure to check the link below or at the end of the video. I also want to give a huge shout out to my new patron, John Capos. I hope I said that right, John. He runs an incredible website called Hollywood Studios HQ. And it's all about Disney's Hollywood Studios down in Florida. There's a link in the description below, so be sure to check his site out. While you're looking down below for that link too, don't forget to check the links for the Facebook fan page, the Facebook group, Discord, Reddit, merchandise, Sir Willow pins, and so much more. There's a bunch in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Thank you so very much for watching, and God bless. Car by car, a car a year. That's just, okay. Get my tongue working. He runs an incredible website called Hollywood Studios HK. HK. <laughs> Not HK. If you want to know whenever I have a new video out, well, hey, make sure you hit that button right there and subscribe. If you want to see another video right now, well, I've got a great one right here for you. And if you want to be like these wonderful people here and help support me financially on Patreon, well, check out that link right there and it'll take you to it. Thanks so much and God bless.